What's up, Trainiacs? Welcome to this week's Triathlon News Day Tuesday, one of the most brutally structured races on the pro circuit. The Super League Triathlon happened on the weekend. Challenge Roth, which has some of the biggest crowds in triathlon, also happened. And the Facebook live streaming partnership with Iron Man happened again. And it was good. Stick around. <laughs> So what's up triathletes? Welcome to this week's Triathlon News Day Tuesday where every single week we go over news and triathlonisms happening all throughout the world. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where everyone's favorite part of Triathlon News Day Tuesday happens. It is a story from the Trainiac community and as always full links to everything we talk about will be in the description below so you can find it there. Let's get started with the New York City Olympic Distance Triathlon which happened over the weekend. Basically races that aren't on a circuit that pros actually go to is kind of a rare thing now so the New York City Triathlon was kind of neat. Ben Canute won it in 146.34, proving that even though he's recently stepped up to the half Ironman distance, he still is greasy fast at the shorter distances. On the women's side, Sarah Haskins won in 159.52. Now the Super League Triathlon is a short distance triathlon that is a little bit wacky. I'll let you go to the website for full details about this, but in general, it is a 400 meter swim, a six kilometer bike, and then a 2.4 kilometer run done three times, but in different orders and on two different days. So what ends up happening is you have short course Olympic and sprint specialist triathletes that just turn themselves inside out because it's done by handicaps and jockeying for position throughout all the different starts. So you have people that are near death at the finish line. There was one on the men's side by Denmark's Andreas Schilling. Also shout out to Canadians Tyler Mislocek and Matthew Sharp. The women's side of the race was won by Australian Emma Jeffco, and the podium was rounded out by Canadian again, Desiree Ridnow, and Poland's Maria Chesnik. One of the most popular, biggest full Ironman distance races, Challenge Roth happened on the weekend. This race is made popular by the huge crowds that they get and the fast times that are consistently laid down year over year. Sebastian Keenley was the favorite coming into the race and he didn't disappoint winning by over six minutes in 7.46.23. Surprisingly, a relatively slow speed on that course. The women's race was a lot more dramatic with one of the favorites, Lucy Charles, playing out her usual strategy of setting a course record on the swim, leading coming off the bike, but then she couldn't hold it on the run. With about 5K left, Daniela Samler passed her. Lucy Charles bridged up, fought back for the lead a little bit, but eventually Samler ended up gaining about 400 meters on Lucy Charles. Lucy Charles then surged at the end only to use lose to Daniela Samler by nine seconds at the end, and then they both fell down. In Ironman racing, the second live Facebook streamed full Ironman distance event in the Facebook and Ironman partnership happened in Ironman Austria, and we got to watch Mickey Weiss and Maureen Huff win their men's and women's races respectively, and their times were 8.04.46 and nine hours flat, 32 seconds. And it looks to me like if these live streams are going to continue, that Ironman is going to have to figure out which races and which courses you end up doing it on because from what I watched, it was really hard to get a sense of how the race was unfolding because the course was so densely packed that basically you were just watching packs of amateur athletes and no indication of who the pros were, where they were in the standings. Something to work out, but I know that they can get there. Half Ironman Edinburgh also happened with the women's race being won by Finella Langridge and Yvonne Yarridge. I really just wanted to throw that in because their names are fun to say. The men's second place was taken by Matt Sharbot, who has appeared on the podcast recently, the Triathlon Terror Podcast. It is the most highly reviewed triathlon podcast in the world. And speaking of the podcast, just this past week, we released two episodes, one being 
a bonus episode where I talked about how my half Iron Man Coeur d'Alene went. And then on Sunday, we released a podcast that we did just literally hours after the race finished with the winner, Matt Hansen. Fair warning, we are currently going through some technical difficulties with our podcasting host and we are switching over. So the link to our website where the podcast is actually working and functioning is in the description below. And over the next week or so, we'll be getting everything fixed and you'll be able to get it in iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast. We're gonna even try for Spotify. I know everyone wants Spotify. All the podcast players out there, bear with us. Now let's get into everyone's favorite part of Triathlon Newsday Tuesday, a story from the Trainiac community, which starts out with Robert, who says, I am 62 years old. Well, actually, I'm 20 years old with 42 years experience. Way back while in college in the early 80s, I aspired to participate in a relatively new sport that was being featured on the wide world of sports. This new sport was called triathlon. So I began biking and running, but my studies and eventually graduation led me to a life in the Marine Corps and law enforcement. Life got in the way and my triathlon dream was put on the back burner. Fast forward to 2008 when I retired from the Corps after serving six tours overseas, suffering from three traumatic brain injuries which resulted in PTSD and essential tremors as a result. At that point, I pretty much felt useless and used up. I became depressed and I excelled at eating large quantities of food, going from five foot six inches tall and 130 pounds at retirement to 180 pounds by July 2017, which is when I had a heart attack and decided that I'd had enough of beating myself up. I'd like to show you a picture from that time, but unfortunately at that same time, we were hit by both Hurricane Hermine and Hurricane Irma, and we lost all of our material possessions. Anyway, a couple months after that heart attack in September 2017, I got off the sofa and actually went outside and jogged one lap around my street. And over the next several weeks, I would add another lap and another lap until I reached four miles on an average run. During one of those runs, the desire hit me again to compete in a triathlon. I bought a bike and began alternating riding and running. And in January 2018, I added swimming by signing up for swimming lessons and swim coaching. I'm not the fastest age grouper, but I have the stamina and determination to be the best, which I learned in the core. Since March of this year, I've completed four sprint triathlons, finishing second twice and third twice, and I have four more races lined up this year. My health has improved greatly, and I lost 52 pounds. Triathlons are my therapy, as they give me something to physically and emotionally challenge me with, and I was missing that after leaving the military. Every time you post something, someone like me is watching and finding encouragement and motivation to keep pursuing the dream. Keep up the good work. Robert, you keep up the good work too. I'm sure all the people around you are extremely motivated by you. So keep going. Thank you very much for sharing your story. If any of you want to get your stories shared here on Triathlon Newsday Tuesday, email them to me at taren at triathlonterran.com and if you aren't already subscribed and you like these Triathlon Newsday Tuesdays that come out every single Tuesday, hit the subscribe button below. And if you are already subscribed, just continue being awesome. Like you guys. Like you guys that are subscribed. Later, Trainiacs.